Into the lion's den. David Cameron's of the European Parliament in Brussels seeking support for his EU reform demands for Britain. A late arrival was not the best of starts for the UK Prime Minister, nor perhaps was his host's failure to guarantee that any deal approved by Britons in an in out referendum would be binding. I can't give a guarantee for an outcome of a future uh, legislation. Nevertheless, it's quite uh, understandable that the Prime Minister asked the European Parliament to cooperate as intensive as possible and that was the assurance I gave to the Prime Minister that we will do the utmost to find a fair deal. Ahead of a crucial end-of-week EU summit, the British Premier met Francois Hollande in Paris on Monday night. A French presidency source said there was a will to reach a deal, but there's still work to be done. The latest slaughter in Syria is a war crime, say France and Turkey. For the UN, Monday's missile attacks on hospitals and schools in rebel-held areas that left up to 50 civilians dead were a violation of international law. With one of its hospitals reduced to rubble, Médecins Sans Frontières, Doctors Without Borders, says either the Syrian government or its main supporter, Russia, was responsible. Our staff in the field, the medical staff, the patient, they immediately report, they say, those are airstrikes from the, from the Russian. But at the same time, uh, the information was not so clear because other, other people in the, in the area, other staff, uh, report that the, um, the shelling were coming from the ground. Russia is being widely blamed, including by Turkey, though Syria's ambassador in Moscow claims American warplanes were behind the attack on the medical charity's facility. The U.S. insists it's put a premium on trying to halt the violence. We have condemned that uh, in the strongest terms, uh, and we think it runs counter, frankly, uh, to the commitment made in Munich uh, on Friday and to our shared interest in uh, seeing the violence reduced, civilians allowed to receive humanitarian assistance, which is of critical importance. Further complicating the conflict, Turkey is now shelling Kurdish positions in northern Syria, fearing the expansion of Kurdish influence there will encourage separatist ambitions among its own Kurds. Belgian police have detained 10 people suspected of operating a recruitment ring for the self-proclaimed Islamic State group. Nine raids were carried out on homes in and around Brussels at the request of a judge in Liège who specialises in terrorism-related cases. Computer equipment and mobile phones were seized. Federal prosecutors say the investigation has shed light on a number of people who'd gone to Syria to join ISIL. Local media reports the inquiry is not linked to the November Paris attacks, which were partly planned in Belgium and following which Belgian police arrested 10 people. Amid heavy security and with dozens of psychologists present, tonight Eagles of Death Metal are playing their first solo gig in Paris since last November's terror attacks. The band was performing when Islamist gunmen stormed the Bataclan, killing 89 people. It's still on our minds, of course, but to an extent, life goes on and it's better that way, says this man. It's good that they're playing again. Life must go on. Another woman added, I heard the survivors had been offered free invites to tonight's gig. I think it's really good. The people who are returning to watch them are very brave. I think it's really the best way to act at the moment. Frontman Jesse Hughes made the same point in an emotional interview ahead of the gig. He also sympathized with those who couldn't go to the concert. Everyone's got to move in their own time, he said. I haven't had any nightmares and I've slept fine, but when I'm awake is when I see things that are, that are nightmares, you know. Um, and I thought that talking about it would make it easier. And I thought that uh, expelling it from inside of me would, would make me less like this. But it's not. There's really no frame of reference for this at all. I just wish it would go away. In December, the band joined U2 on stage in Paris for a poignant rendition of their song, People Have the Power.
Just days ahead of the next primary vote, former U.S. President George W. Bush has come out in support of his brother Jeb to try to get his Republican presidential campaign off the ground. Nationally, views on the former leader are mixed, but here in South Carolina, he remains hugely popular. There seems to be a lot of name-calling going on, but I want to remind you what our good dad told me one time. Labels are for soup cans. The presidency is a serious job that requires sound judgment and good ideas. And there's no doubt in my mind that Jeb Bush has the experience and the character to be a great president. My big little brother, Jeb Bush.